Sorry. Um, can we see if Ellen is online? Or? It looks like we have a backup video in case. We have a video. Normally, we have a video otherwise, yes. Hi, I'm Helen Landis Jones, and I'm going to talk to you about the MBN Atlas and our transformation and realignment with the ALA. Uh, we are the National Biodiversity Network Trust, or the MBN Trust, and we coordinate more than 200 organisations and many individuals in the UK's largest partnership for nature the MBN, who are all actively engaged in the gathering, management and utilisation of biodiversity information. Our members include government environmental agencies, conservation charities, local environmental record centres and various recording groups and societies. At the heart of what we do is the MBN Atlas, which is the largest collection of publicly available biodiversity data in the UK. It is accessed by thousands of users across the public, academic, charitable and private sectors who view and download hundreds of millions of records each year. The MBN Atlas was launched in 2017 and is built on the open source Atlas of Living Australia platform, the ALA. As such, we are one of the global family of living atlases, but we are also by far the largest, with almost twice as many records as the ALA. Today, we have more than 250 million records of more than 50,000 UK species. In computing terms, in the production space, we have 47 VMs, and these are all hosted in AWS. Some of the services uh, used to be hosted in Azure, but we moved them over to AWS in an infrastructure consolidation exercise. Now, taking care of this platform are just two developers, myself and Keith. Uh, we've been with the MBN Trust for well, Keith for one and a half years and myself two and a half years. Uh, both of us are full stack developers and neither of us can say we had significant cloud-based DevOps experience, certainly not um, for a platform this size. Now, it's no secret that the MBM Atlas got into trouble and the reason for this was twofold. Firstly, the platform code had been customised in order to meet the requirements of the UK's recording community. Um, these customizations went into the fork, meaning that the fork hardened and we became detached from the other living atlases. It also meant that we were not able to upgrade the platform and as a result, we got left behind and left on our own. Secondly, the platform was being managed in a predominantly manual fashion. So examples of this were um, things like we were building and deploying code from laptops. We were logging onto servers and changing the configuration. Or if there was an, a problem, we'd uh, log onto server and grep through the 
the logs just to see to find errors. We were also every month doing the data processing in a mostly manual way, which was very time consuming, stressful and prone to mistakes. There was also very little documentation. And uh, there you can see a photograph of me when I started working here two and a half years ago. <laughs> So, uh, what did we do about it? Well, we started the Fit for the Future project, which was a two-year, about two-year-long project to make the MEN Atlas fit for the future. And uh, the project had three main objectives. Uh, firstly, to extract the customizations into a separate layer, thus enabling us to upgrade the platform code. Uh, two, to modernize DevOps practices and the management of the infrastructure. And uh, finally, to migrate to pipelines. So how did we extract the code customizations? Well, with various techniques we used. We exploited object-oriented techniques. We made full use of dependency injection so we could swap in our implementations. Many of the ALA services are Grails Groovy, so we changed Grails apps into plugins so we could extend them. Uh, we created wall overlays, and then we also found a way to create jar overlays. And for the front end, we used JavaScript to inject and change the content. And uh, also for the data processor, we created some of our own MBM processing modules. Uh, we also started to do some refactorization and consolidation of the customizations. Uh, but there's, there's more work to be done on this, and we expect to do that when we migrate to pipelines. Uh, for DevOps and infrastructure, the first thing we did was write ops docs and lots and lots of run books. Uh, these served as a great starting point for the MBN Atlas documentation. We then fixed the Travis Nexus build pipelines, uh, which meant that we no longer built on and deployed from laptops, which was fantastic. Then we installed Rundeck, which is a free and easy to use workflow automation, uh, automation tool. Um, we set about automating the time consuming and frequently occurring tasks, starting with push button code deployment. Um, to both production and test environments. We then automated much of the data processing steps, which was basically an exercise in scripting the data processing run books. Um, and it was at this point the AWS contacted us and they uh, we showed them what we were doing about the Fit for the Future project and they very kindly offered to pay for a well-architected framework review where they review the infrastructure in AWS and our management of it and then suggest improvements. So they, they put us in touch with one of their partners, Cirrus HQ, who performed the review and then they carried out some uh, remedial work whilst also teaching us how to properly manage the, the infrastructure. So they set us off down the right path and they helped us quite a lot actually. And there uh, is just a little screenshot basically of the data processing dashboard in run deck and those little buttons that you press. So that, that's obviously going to change when we move to pipelines. But all that used to be manual and now we just press buttons so it's fantastic. So where are we at now? Uh, we've um, rolled out a significant portion of the upgraded platform. We manage the VMs with code using Ansible and I want to say at this point that uh, the toolkit written by Vicente has been a great help to us. So well, thank you very much Vicente. Um, we manage the solar cloud infrastructure with code using AWS CDK and we do this in Python. Um, as a result of all this we've been able to upgrade our um, solar cloud which um, is, is significant actually because um, this involved, first of all, coming up with some performance testings, perform a performance testing strategy, and then running against multiple solar configurations. Now, at the start of this project, we had lots of problems around solar stability, which we resolved to some extent, but we were not in a position to do anything at all with the solar cloud configuration, never mind upgrade it. So we've come a long way. Um, interestingly, also, we put the Atlas behind the a web application firewall because we had a pen test done which revealed a number of issues that needed resolving and then over a three month period we gradually put the services one by one behind the firewall and uh, monitored for false positives. Uh, this mitigated um, many of the OWASP vulnerabilities that have been identified and uh, we also added uh, managed bot control rules package as we found we were being targeted by bots which was putting a heavy load on the records, web service and solar. Now, thanks to the WAF, we've been able to uh, easily block them. Uh, what's next? 
Uh, for the rest of this year, we'll be deploying the remaining upgraded services, but the code has already been upgraded for that. We just need to set up the VMs. Uh, then in January, we kick off a, a six-month project to migrate to the new pipelines. Um, within that project, we are also going to develop a pr proof of concept to extend the sampling to support polygon-to-polygon -polygon searches, which is it's just an idea at the moment, but we are interested in deploying this sampling as um, high performance compute workloads. Um, we also look forward to deepening our ties with the ALA community and uh, playing our part in its, in its continued success and evolution. Additional work, we have done some other things as well, uh, a, little, a little, not too much, but we have done some stuff. So we started a new project called Access Controls, which allows us uh, allows data providers to set the public resolution of records in a data set, and then to give individuals and organisations access to the supplied location in the downloads. Uh, we're following an iterative development approach and have almost completed iteration one. Also, uh, this is kind of a bit of a personal in, uh, project for me, I suppose. Uh, there's lots of interest out there from developers who want to upskill and uh, help charities through uh, on a voluntary basis, uh, but the challenge is managing it and managing the work. So we created an open source monorepo project hub with an initial focus on React components starting with maps, uh, because we want to be able to improve the options for embedding maps in external websites. Um, We've made some good progress with that. We use storybooks for the React as well. It's pretty cool. Or also, uh, we use volunteers sometimes to do exploratory work. Uh, it's been good working with React because it's provided us with an opportunity to keep our front end development skills up to date, which is uh, good fun and it's a bit of a light relief from the atmosphere. So, things are looking really good for the MBN app. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. I'm Helen, and uh, that's Keith there. He likes to go snorkeling. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Can we double check uh, Richard if Helen is online? Hi. Helen, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Right. Thanks for joining us. So, um, let me open the floor here and see if there are any questions for Helen. Oh, let me go to, to online. Helen, you have a question. You mentioned finding server load caused by bots. Did they seem to be generic bots targeting any web server or specifically set up to attack living Atlas servers? I think they were just generic bots. They were just looking, uh, you know, trying to find sites that they could dig into the data. And then when they found us, they would then just hit us with lots of random requests, actually. They were sending strings that were meaningless, but they were obviously causing problems for solar. That's right, Helen. Do you have any other questions? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so now we are going to have uh, our last presentation bef before the discussions. And uh, uh, it's going to be a virtual uh, play 